fair use in your caboose bowl. We back at it, man. We back at it, man. I'm sorry, man. I just got that. I got that itch, man. You know what I mean? When you just want to scratch up in the in the mud floods, you know. I got the mud flood itch, man. <laughs> we just talking to 1800s, man. Nah, man. You know what, man? Uh, something about talking about talking about uh, this uh, Taku Meshe. It's just fun, man, to talk to Kumsa, man. It's fun to break through the illusion because only a certain few of your priest kings will get you there, but you'll get there when you're searching for David. When you're searching for King David, man, when you're searching for for David who is shepherd over Israel forever, then you can find, you know, the the bits and the pieces of the puzzle, you know, the phantasm and duplicates. You can search and decipher through reality and illusion. And it's so much reality and the frequency of speaking about this uh Tech who mesh, man. Love to Hakan Hire Mark, man. Make sure you subscribe because he's doing great work on this exact subject and not other uh, you know, highly valuable conversations that's going on at Hire Mark's channel, man. Get in there. Um get in Caramel's classroom, you know what I mean? He, he's digging highly on the indigenous truth, man. So it's happening all around you. It's happening all around you. Templar Urban Reed. You already know. Let's go. Get in these classrooms. It's pertinent, man. It's pertinent, man. It's pertinent. Let's go. We just talking about reality over illusion. You know, order over chaos. So, we're going to watch. You know, we're going to fall back, man, in the classroom, man. You know, I don't want to get too linky today. I don't want to read too much. You know, I just want to fall back. And uh, go over a few of the things, you know what I mean, that we are, that that's really pertinent to what's going on right now. Because these fireballs and these comets, it's happening every day at higher and higher rates, you know what I mean, uh, frequency is going down. So this is a very, um, you know, current topic, man, to talk comets or meteors or fireballs or all this stuff, because everyone has their theory, so... Why can't we have ours? This is our investigation. Uh, we're doing this investigation. We're doing this teaching. We're doing this this criticism. All right? Scholarship and research. We're doing it, man. All right? For educational purposes, man. All right? All right, man. Fair use in your caboose. Because we're going to get a, a little bit of a, a good chunk, man. A good clip of this film, you know, having to do with the Kuma set. He's going to kind of just fall back and... You know what I mean? See if we can get some drop out of it, man. Nothing heavy. You know what I mean? You know, nothing heavy. I know we've been talking about uh, a little bit of this black sun prophecy with this eclipse that has everything to do with this so-called comet or meteor or dragon. This this dragon in the air. And we're going to read, you know, some, uh, you know, documents talking about that this comet was so big it was like a million miles across it said it was bigger than the sun <laughs> so this is how big this dragon is man i mean most high has very very big dragons like like leviathan right i mean behemoth leviathan imagine leviathan in the air you know what i mean then you probably get this common situation so Check it out, man. Let's uh, dig on a little bit of this. Uh... Yeah, man, we in the drop chatter, man. We just getting cozy, man. You know, don't mind us, man. We just surfing away. I'm just kicking it, man. I'm getting lonely. Ooh, ooh, to be me. Just want to be free. All right, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, uh... No, don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Let's get it. Let's get it like this. Let's get it like this. Guess you can't go full screen in the chat room. All right. All right. I got to upgrade. I got to upgrade. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Back it up, man. Back it up, man. Do 
get the blood. Uh, all right, cool, cool. Let's go. I'm going to read it. You know what I'm saying? You might be at work or something. But we're just talking about the Black Sun prophecy. Let's go. Until recently, I had never heard of the Black Sun. Since hearing of it, I have done some research and found several different ideas and theories. Then I remember coming across this letter dated circa 1997. I make no claims as to what it may mean or if it means anything at all. I leave that for you to judge. All right. Make sure we ain't missing nothing here. So. Never heard about the Black Sun. Since hearing of it, I have done some research and found several different ideas and theories. You're digging on it. I get it. I can dig that. You can dig that. We, we're all digging on it. If you're not digging on stuff like this, what are you doing? You know what I mean? If you if you if you if you're looking for reality, <laughs> you might want to dig on stuff like this because it's gonna it's gonna create some very interesting ideas and theories. All right. <laughs> Then I remember coming across this letter dated 1997. All right, so this letter that I guess we're going to be introduced to was written in 1997. All right, I make no claims as to what it may mean. All right, let's go. Okay, I'm with you. She just surfing away. I can dig that. I respect that. You know what I mean? We're all just surfing away. In the days before the road of the sun was sorrow, mind corrupted and swayed by the world, all became as darkness, hiding at every open opportunity, but there was hope, hope in the same knowledge that might destroy a man or most men, not all men except knowledge, but only hope, and others only hope, and pray ignorance. Folly lies here, so where is safe even from ourselves. Preservation is the key to insight. As the road is long, one must not trust to the obvious, but keep in mind the path. Life follows as the balance. Light begets darkness as life to death, and also darkness to light, death nourishing life. Man, what does it mean, man? What does it mean? You got my head. You got my head in the crux, man. <laughs> All right, man. I mean, hey, man, you put it together. Don't ask me. I mean, you see it. You read it. You put it together. What are we talking about here? There's a great difference between what you think you know and what you truly know. Listen not to the flesh, but to the spirit. The energy that is life, which are you and me. The great war may not come as most believe it will. Its coming will be unnoticed by many, and those will be ill prepared. Damn. Damn. Y'all feeling this, man? Y'all feeling this situation, man? We're just talking about the Black Sun Prophecy, man. We're just talking about the Black Sun Prophecy. Don't tell nobody. Cause they digging on it. They investigating. Why can't we investigate? Huh? Why can't we as a community have an investigation? You know, dig on it in real time. You know, encourage our community to keep digging on it. Encourage our community to look through the lens of reality. That you are the copper color knock and found here. That they brought a Hebrew interpreter to speak on you, man. Alright? And that this is the actual, you know, reality, man, of where we're standing right now in the old world. And we're getting all these sources to verify that. And now we're just talking prophecy. And, of course, we're talking Hebrews and Israelites because we've got all the documentation backing that up regarding Tecumseh, regarding Hawatha, a kind of Abraham, right? So now we you know, are sitting cozy. We're cozy, you know, because we have perspective. That's the thing about digging on it. It's not just that we are just looking for a bunch of information. What are we going to drop next? What are we going to drop next? Nah, if it has to feel good, it has to feel right. So that's why you might see me fall back for a few days and 
get that feeling in. Bang, bang, bang. I'm, you know, Takum say three, Takum say four, Takum say five. It's a flow, man. You know what I mean? That's, you know, I'm, I'm just getting my rhythm, man. I'm just getting my rhythm back, man. I'm just getting cozy again. I mean, you've been surfing away from me from the balcony. You, you, you know this feeling. You should be sitting back already, like, oh damn, man, man, drop this, man. He, he, he's eating up. He's on a war path, boss. The price is going up. I told you all the price is going up. Now we talking black sun prophecies, man. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it, man? So you've been surfing away from me. Hey, hi, for real, for real. You've been seeing us being framed in shape. Hey, man, because of you, we're going to get to where we're going, man. All right? Hey, hi, let's go. So again, man, dig on this, man. Let me, let me, you know, alkaline right quick. I want to watch this movie. I want to fall back. I don't want to. I don't want to yell on y'all, man. I want to. I want to watch this movie. Fair use, you know what I mean. Hopefully there ain't no problems. Hopefully ain't nobody jam me up. You know what I mean. So if they don't jam me up, we could watch more of it. I might just try to get a piece of it, maybe like, you know, ten, twenty minutes of it, or something, just to see how they, you know, see if they gonna trip. Cause you know we fight to fight. You know we fight to fight. Anything you know by now is that drop fight to fight. We gonna fight to fight. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is, man. So, a hop to the home team. Now, there's a great difference between what you think you know and what you truly know. Listen not to the flesh, but to the spirit, the energy that is life, which are you and me. The great war may not come as most believe it will. How do you believe the great war will come? Everybody can feel it. Everybody can sense it. Coming in the air tonight. It's coming will be unnoticed by many, just like the Mayan prophecy, 2012, and then bang, sparked up a bunch of indigenous nagas all over the place. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's an energy wave. The credit goes to Hawa. All credit for all information and every bit of the influence. All credit goes to our secure breath, Hawa. And that's how we flow. It's coming will be unnoticed by many. And those will be ill prepared. Take heed to keep what you know. Keep what you know. Keep your commandments. Keep your law. Take heed to keep what you know. And always remember it. Never forget what you know. For that will be your downfall man. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Never forget. Never forget what you know. You know what you know. When you digging on all this, you know, information, you can dig in it, man. If you ain't found it, you might get tossed up and washed up in the in the water, washed up in the wave. But, you know, you can always swim back to shore, man. It's all good. But just never forget what you know. You know what I'm saying? Let the things you know be where you pivot from. From the very beginning, we told you what we, you know, in terms of the investigation, what 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 we know. You know what I'm saying? What we believe, what we think we know. You know what I'm saying? We we know that we're not spinning on the ball. <laughs> so straight up, I mean, you know, if you could, if you could, you know, put me back on a ball, man. Good luck, man. Good luck with that, man, because I know I'm not spinning on the ball. You dig? I, I know that we are in a frequency and that this is a frequency war. And that 4 plus 3 plus 2 equals 9. I know that. And I know now, even clearer, you know what I'm saying, the, the power and the clarity of the 9, which is the dragon. Now I know that. So we, we stand on what we know here. We know we're not spinning on the ball. We know 4 plus 3 plus 2 is our 9, is our frequency, is our flow. We know we're in a frequency war, 440 and 432 hertz. That's documented. We know that Hawaii exists. And that we are those that have been abstracted into religion. We are the seed. We are the truth. We are the original, man. So the indigenous truth rocks. And I know these copper-colored nagas. 
is indigenous here. And I know that every Naga got a dragon. <laughs> These are facts, homie. So, you know, stand for what you know and never forget what you know. For that will be your downfall. Learn well the things that will serve you in times of need. Always in hope a belief to be sustained. Guarded and spread wherever needed in the times of fire. Spread, guarded. Always is hope a belief to be sustained. Guard your hope, man. Don't let nobody take your hope away. You got a hope? You hoping your people? You hoping drop nation? Don't let nobody take it away. Guard it. And spread it, man. Spread the frequency, man. Spread the frequency, man. Make them aware. We we are in the in the in the flow, man, of vibration awareness, man. We want to make everyone aware of this vibration. We want to tune everyone's music to the frequency of water, that four plus three plus two, that that indigenous flow, that ancient love song. We want to spread the frequency, man. And we guard what what we hope for, you know what I mean? We hope for our redemption. And we guard it. We don't let no one take that hope away. That our creator exists and that our redemption is near. And that's not propaganda. That's not hate. That's just, uh, that's just being, you know, being fair, you know? That's just a fair shake. It's fair for the people that have been stripped and, uh, you know, violated in every possible way to be redeemed. You know, if you're against that, then you truly are a devil. And you're going to have to choose your frequency, 440 or 432, the devil, the fox, <laughs> or the dragon, the angel, the highest order, the seraph. You dig? Guarded and spread wherever needed. In the times of fire. Allow why, man. Let's get some more of this black sun prophecy, man. I didn't know it was going to be this good, for real, man. I didn't know it was going to be this good. We just surfing the wave, man. Keep with you those of like mind of like spirit for they will be your allies in any affair never distrust each other for you will be engulfed in darkness and pray to the nameless man i mean how relevant is this man how much drop is this we talking the black sun prophecy man <laughs> don't think that's something Type of feeling in this and vibration that connects to you as an indigenous man and indigenous woman, indigenous king, indigenous queen, indigenous Amaru Khan. Keep with you those those of like mind, right? Vibe up, choose up, tribe up. Ain't that the same thing? Of like spirit. For they will be your allies in any affair. Tribe up, let's go. Never distrust each other. You're going to have all kind of energies trying to get in the way, trying to make you distrust your brother, your sister. Man, you know your real ones, man. Have faith in them. Never distrust them, man. Never distrust each other. For you will be engulfed once you lose that trust in each other. Don't mean somebody's perfect. It means trust that at the end of the day, they're going to choose up, man. It don't mean they choose up every time. I mean, dang, you know what I'm saying? What do you want, man? What do you want? But it means that, you know what I'm saying, that they will, you know, gravitate, e electrically gravitate towards choosing up, man. More times than not, you know what I mean? And in this, be wary of those who bring ill-begotten flesh, man. Be wary of the hijacks. And those who seek the world and not enlightenment. Man, you got that all around you, man. People that stop asking questions. And they start ridiculing you for asking questions. Because they don't seek to be enlightened any further. Because they think they have it all already. They think they have knowledge. But they only seek the world. They don't seek 
enlightenment. They don't seek the drop. Show no trust, bear no allegiance, and spare no deserving quarry. Who has done great wrong? Gather with you good friends, loved ones who will be your strength and you theirs. Prepare for the next age. Let's go. When all will become the torrent, the flow, the torrent, the water, the wave, man. The giants will come to slay and some will come to feast. It will be no war like any have ever seen. So watch well the sky. Watch well the sky. Watch well the sky. And heed well the stars. Do not follow the world. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Christianity teach you all, man. You know, those, those stars, evil witches, don't look at the stars. You know what I mean? They, they, they get you spooked about the stars, man. But what's really happened with these cometas? Now, this was written, or I guess dated in 1997. By who? I don't know. Could it be just, you know, some, some wake-up call? When the time nears, pacifism will cut the throat of sovereignty and the path will blur. <laughs> this says it all right here, man. To my copper colored naga, Amaru Khan. When the time nears, like right now, pacifism will cut the throat of sovereignty. <laughs> the pacifism we feel to get down with this machine and this system and this environment and not rock our own, or we don't believe that we can be our own sovereign, so literally our throat is cut. We kill ourselves because we're so afraid. They got us in fear. We got us completely pacified that we can't run our own kingdom or have our own vibration, so we are pacified. Give us a black band in the White House. It pacifies us. We want to be a part of this thing. That's our issue with a lot of the Moorish science situation is that we ain't trying to sign no contracts and be a part of nothing, man. We don't want to sign nothing to say, hey, here's our Indian name. Can we be recognized, please, by the such and such hijack of such and such? Who who needs to be recognized by the hijack? Would the coon say want to be recognized by the hijack who's slaying his family? We got to work with it. We got the Moors shield so that we can use the laws. What? When the time nears, pacifism will cut the throat of sovereignty. To be sovereign means that you're hijack free. You have your own law, your own nobility, your own government. And the path will blur because you can't see clearly. Death will deliver none, and none shall see sun. Flesh will burn with rage and turn man to true beast. Humanity will be embraced and the soul will give way. Mortal feeling and substance will prevail, and a time will come when some will succumb of those who did not fall, and sorrow will be their reward. Time will pass slow and be hard, but power comes with patience. Man, I mean, you feel like this is the time you're living in right now? Death around the corner delivering none. And none shall see sun. Chemtrails, everything blotted out. Is that the real sun? Is that the fake sun? Flesh will burn with rage and turn man to true beast. Humanity will be embraced. And the soul will give way. Mortal feeling and substance will prevail, man. And a time will come when some will succumb of those who did not fall. And sorrow will be their reward. Sorrow, time will pass slow and be hard. But power comes with patience, man. My naga, I know you're tired of hearing it. Everyone's told you to be patient since, since the beginning of every single captivity. But you got to be patient at the end more than you ever were at the beginning. And as things play out now, 
It's very important to be patient. Patient doesn't mean pacify. It means that you can hear clearly. You can see clearly. You can hear what's going on around you, in you, with you know, through you. You can you can perceive your flow so you know what flow to be in. You gotta be patient so you can master yourself right now. Be patient with each other. You know what I mean? Be be patient with yourself. Don't be impatient. You dig? And the keys will unfold. Man, so power comes with patience and the keys will unfold. I got the keys, the keys, the keys. Then our time will be at hand. Strength through wisdom and insight. Together we will rise. Quam! And the sky will be gray. The black sun will rise. Circa 1997, man. So that's very interesting. You know what I mean? Just uh, wanted to dig a little more on the black sun, man. Before we catch a little bit of this flick. And of course, man. Of course, man. You know, just to recap on this great doc right here, www.eclipsechasers-chasers.com. You know, we dropped a little bit on this, The Legend of the Eclipse in 1806. Harrison was looking for a way to discredit the brothers in the eyes of the Indians, right? So he's fighting to hijack Harrison. He's trying to discredit Tecumse and his brothers. The prophet claimed to have Almost divine powers. <laughs> Sounds biblical, right? So Harrison decided to put forth the challenge using his Christian upbringing as a base. Harrison wrote an open letter to the Indians gathered at Tippecanoe. He wrote, if he the prophet is really a prophet, ask him to cause the sun to stand still or the moon to alter its course. More proof that the sun must be moving around you. <laughs> I mean, this is some flat drop, you know, as we get into it. <laughs> Just like Joshua, you know, Joshua, he had the sun stand still so he could finish the war, letting you know that the sun is rotating around you. You're not going around it. That's heliocent heliocentrism. You don't want to be too helio these days. Trust me, man. You don't want to be rotating around the sun when it's already moving around you. It's not stationary. You're going around it. So he had to cause the sun to stand still, stop in your tracks. He didn't say, stop the earth, stop the spinning right now. We need this perfect position. He said, nah, man, we got to stop the sun from moving. Because that's what's moving. All right. It would have been easier to stop the earth, right? Because you're on the earth. But what did he say? If he, the prophet, is really a prophet, ask him to cause the sun to stand still. All right, make sure you can see this. I know it's small, man. Pull it up, pull it up. Pull up the link. Or the moon to alter its course, the rivers to cease to flow, or the dead to rise from their graves. In other words, he wanted to see them produce a miracle of biblical proportions. What he did not expect was the reaction of the Indians to this request from them. For them, this request had different meaning. This letter was presented to the brothers when they were visiting a friend along the White River. One story has the two of them going inside to meet in private. After an hour had passed, the prophet requested that all in the village be assembled for him to, de to deliver his response. So he said, all right, let go. Everybody, come out, man. Let's go. He said that he had consulted with the great spirit and that she was not she was not happy about Harrison's request. And he said, oh, mama, man, you know what I mean? Uh, my, my breath, man, wisdom ain't too happy with this, man. Thus the great spirit had agreed to give a sign that the prophet could share with others in advance to the to demonstrate just how closely related they were. The prophet spoke in a loud and confident voice saying that, quote, 50 days from this day, there will be no cloud in the sky. Yet when the sun had, has reached its highest point at the moment, 
will the great spirit take it into her hand and hide it from us. The darkness of night will therefore cover us and the stars will shine round about us. The birds will roost and the night creatures will awaken and stir. At around noon on the appointed day, June 16, 1808, a total solar eclipse crossed the region. A long eclipse with a band of totality stretching from the near Mississippi, of su uh, near the southern tip of Lake Michigan, to just north of Cincinnati. It encompassed most of the lands inhabited by Tenskawatawa's followers, man. So that's the point that we had reached uh, last time, but... You know, we're just talking about this, you know, signs of biblical, of biblical, of biblical proportion, man. Um, you know, dig on that, dig on that, dig on it. We got this drop uh, before, astrocoins.mrcollector.eu. And this is a part that I don't know we read um, regarding Napoleon's. And to Kunse's comments. So which one? Which one? You got Napoleon getting chased out of Russia by dragon fire. They call it almost oh, be an atomic bomb. It was a different type of fire. Then you got the Kunse, you know, literally, you know, with this sign of this dragon, this comet, even at his birth, which relates to this whole Bethlehem Jesus situation. So you got this Bethlehem star that's visible. Uh, Haley's Comet is at play, um, you know, when you dig on with what uh, Anatoly Fermenko is putting together with this 1053 birth, this 1053 AD birth of the Mashiach is what Fermenko is putting together, that the Mashiach, Joshua, Joshua was born in 1053, and now you connect that with this, you know, all right, man, there's it's, it's a lot of comets happening around these births of these Mashiachs, man. And Takum says no different. So, you know, you got Napoleon. Takum says comment out. says right here. The great comet of 1811 seems to have had no particular impact on astronomers, but the artist worlds adverted to it. Tolstoy, at the end of second book of in his work, War and Peace, wrote about the comet. It was clear and frosty. So he's going to describe... He's going to describe this comet. Now, when I say comet, you just think space junk, uh, some type of docile, round rock thing, right? You don't think about a living creature. You don't think about something with a soul, right? You definitely don't think about nothing uh, that's bearded with tangled dreadlocks and, uh, you know, has a long tail, you know, but... You can say, oh, yeah, comets, tails, I can see that, but you don't really think of it as really being a animated, you know, object, you know, something that is a has intelligence, right? So this is how he's describing this comet in 1811. Tolstoy, at the end of his second book, War and Peace, All right, he wrote about this comet. It was clear and frosty above the dirty ill-lit streets above the black roofs stretched a dark starry sky only looking up at the sky did Pierre cease to feel how sordid and humiliating were all mundane things compared with the heights to which his soul had just been raised at the entrance to the Arbut Square an immense expanse of dark starry sky presented itself to his eyes almost in the center of it Above the Prechentinka Boulevard, surrounded and sprinkled on all sides by stars, but distinguished from them all by its nearness to the earth, its white light, and its long uplifted tail. So, all right, man, just stop the play play and just go there, man. Just go there. Go there with me right now. We're talking about a dragon. Even if you don't even believe it, just, just, just go there for a second. Rock with me, man. Stroll with me, man. Now read this as if you know for sure that we're talking about a dragon. Just just don't even, even play with it. Alright, this is a dragon. 
He's looking at a huge dragon, like a Leviathan-sized dragon. All right, call the comet. But you already know. You already know. Comet is a dragon. Let's go. So, start with a tail. I mean, this is part This is part five. So, I'm going to assume you got the drop. All right, or go get the drop. Let's go. So, he's looking at this comet, or this dragon. Let's just call it what it is. It's a dragon. He's, he sees this dragon, and he has this bright white light we also seen it described as like a second sun like it looks like another sun that's how bright some of these dragons are man and it's long uplifted tail shunned the enormous and brilliant dragon I'm gonna, every time i see comment i'm just gonna say dragon all right so you know that this shit is for real for real all right so uplifted, long uplifted tail shunned the enormous and brilliant dragon in 1812. The dragon was said to portend all kinds of woes, meaning that it's bringing all kinds of plagues and issues, just like the Egyptians got plagued, right? All right, dragons, dragons everywhere. So this dragon, all right, which was said to pertain all kinds of woes and the end of the world. All right, so it has something to do with the end of the world as they know it, okay? In Pierre, however, that dragon with its long luminous tail aroused no feeling of fear. So he wasn't afraid of the dragon. I mean, why would a, a, a big rock, you know, Cause fear if it's if it's not coming directly at you, you just seeing it pass over you. It must be something else to it that might cause you to have a little fear when you're like, oh shit, that's not a rock. <laughs> On the contrary, he gazed joyfully. And look at how he describes this dragon. His eyes moist with tears at this bright dragon which having traveled in its orbit with inconceivable velocity through immeasurable space, so this dragon was supersonic, all right, seemed suddenly like an arrow piercing the earth to remain fixed in a chosen spot, vigorously holding its tail erect, shining and displaying its white light in countless other scintillating stars. It seemed to Pierre that this dragon fully responded to what was passing in his own softened and uplifted soul, now blossoming into a new life. Now, every time they wrote comment, I said dragon, and you got the picture. You got reality right there. Now, you can go back to sleep. Now, you can go back and call this a comment all you want to. Even though they didn't even start calling these things comets or cometas until 1958. So you're in the mind of a hijack. Before that, it's just a star with a tail, bearded with tangled locks. He's talking about his long, uplifted tail. And he said, man, this thing has traveled at supersonic speed, man. Inconceivable velocity through immeasurable space. But now it seems like an arrow piercing the earth. And how is this thing, he said, for this to remain fixed in the chosen spot? So this dragon, after going inconceivable velocity, remained fixed in a chosen spot. And he felt that he had a connection with this dragon for this moment. After going inconceivable velocity in immeasurable space, this dragon chilled out for a second. It remained fixed. It remained chilled out. It kicked back. Vigorously holding its tail erect, man. It sounds like an animal, right? Like, hey, man, hey. Shining and displaying its white light amid countless other scintillating stars. It seemed to Pierre that this comet or this dragon fully responded. How does a piece of rock, dead rock, respond? What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? How does a piece of dead rock hold its tail erect if the tail ain't nothing but more more debris, comet debris, 
If the tail ain't nothing but a bunch of rocks, how does one rock control the other rocks and make sure he holds his tail erect while remaining fixed in a chosen spot? Are we talking comments or dragons, man? Stop bullshitting yourself. Let's get real. So you could try to ignore and call, you know, go back to sleep, man. You know what I'm saying? Call this stuff comments. That's cool. But don't, you know, don't jam us up on our investigation for making sense and seeing the world as it really uh, seems to be, you know, when you see clearly, man, with the naked eye. <laughs> All right, so this is an interesting drop right here. Just wanted to kind of feel that, man, feel that as we make our way, man, to get this flick on, man. We're going to kick back, man, get your popcorn, you know what I mean, fair use. Let's rock. All right, let's 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 rock it out. Great comment of 1811, man. Get this drop, too. You know what I mean? Napoleon's Comet War of 1812. This talks a little bit about the town. The Comet of 1811 was discovered in March of that year in what is now the constellation Papis, Papis, and it was very bright. The evening sky in September and lingered for the rest of the year. So something happening and traveling that fast, how does it linger suddenly just linger around for a year? How's it just suddenly lingering around? This is not a real picture, this is a drawing. Because right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they got a real a real flick on this, but it was lingering around for a whole year. That's a long time. It must have really slowed down, like, like the other cat just said. The head in coma, or tail, of the comet was reported to be wider than the diameter of the sun. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> the head, the head in coma of the comet was reported to be. Wider than the diameter of the sun. Now they're saying the sun is a gajillion, chabillion, kafillion miles across in diameter. It's the most, it's so big, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yet we are going around it, you know what I mean? And, hey man, alright man, alright man. It's so big, though, man. You know what I mean? So this comet must be huge. I mean, it must be the biggest thing these people have ever seen, man. And it had a very long, bright tail. Bright tail. Despite not coming very close to the Earth. The comet was held to be responsible for unusually fine vintages of French wine harvested. From the autumn of 1811, Grave Harvest. So, hey, whenever this drag is around, it's time to die. Time to get your wine. And it is possible that Napoleon was influenced in the decision to invade Russia in June 1812 if he thought of the comet as important of victory. Port meaning, you know, a sign, some type of sign of the victory. Um... I thought somewhere else they had mentioned uh, just how big this thing was. Yeah, this one here, they, what they say. Comet nucleus seemed blurred bright disc, which was surrounded by a dark ring, and only then followed by the coma, which continued into the huge tail. The comet's orbit, computed by air lander, was found in eclipse or ellipse, which the comet runs 3,000 years with era 45 all right 
Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, man. So then you got this whole connection with the Kunsei, whose name literally means shooting star, right? Or panther across the sky. Panther across the sky. Yeah, somewhere else was talking about this thing was a million miles across. You know, I'm going to see it later for sure. I'm like, oh, man. Man, I know I'm going to get it later. But yeah, man. This thing must have been huge, man. <laughs> That's what we do know. This thing must have been huge. To, I mean, just to compare it to the sun and say that it's bigger than the sun. That's crazy. It's terrible. was its tail was 90 million kilometers long. I don't know if this is where I saw the millions. I saw this other part. I was talking millions, but. Its tail was 90 million kilometers long. <laughs> Man. I mean, you know, I'm just trying to get a. feel for how big, you know, we talking, man, we talk about a million, because you read about the Chinese dragons, and some of them are, you know, talked about as being, you know, miles and miles, you know what I'm saying, but yeah, man, I, you know, somewhere, in, you know, these things is big, man, so, let's get it, man, fall back, fall back, and then let's make sure we got enough time, oh, yeah, yeah, we good, we good, we good, we gonna fall back, get cozy, again, man, I ain't playing with you, man. I ain't messing around with you people, man. Oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to get some comments, too, man, because y'all been dropping a lot of great comments, man. Hey, hi, man, to all the home team, man. Matthew Sayahan says, Sirius the dog star, highly venerated in Freemasonry. Not a coincidence. Yeah, man, we got to get on that dog star, man. Love to uh, Jacob Nathan, man. Dragon sponsor on the wall, man. Hit up 432thedrop.com, man. Learn more about becoming a dragon sponsor on the wall. Support the eat the squad. Support the flow. We just getting started. Watch how we go. Man, I've been looking into mud floods and the information is amazing. Hey, Hive, stay stacks. Uh, Black Neo, Israel, Idigeny, Original Prime. Stand up, rise up, choose up. Real Judah, real talk. Black Neil got the drive, man. Uh, I guess Rick Rold said, word. Word up, man. Hey, man. It's got me thinking about the movie, How to Train Your Dragons, referring to us. I am Flying Squirrel. You got the drop. Hawaii, Shabbat, another great drop. Keep the drop going. I need a lesson on how to utilize my membership at Drop Nation to the fullest. I know I'm missing out on, on the backdrop, but I guess you can call me slow, prehistoric. And beyond the time, Shalom Shabbat Nah, seven seven seven. Short time, you right on time, man. There ain't no time, man. Only the wave, man. Hawa, Hawa, I am flying squirrel. Oh uh, man, now I understand their obsession with dogs, man. GT King, you already know, man. Hey, hi, Mario Davis. He said, my brother, you get a chance to look at this video, Inheritance of a Country. I think it's the inheritance of a nation, and that's the one that they were featuring in this drop, man. So, a um, you know, we had a few uh, good bros that were, you know, dropping that link, man. I finally got a chance to dig on it. So, a Mario Davis, he said, thanks for keeping the fire lit, man. a my jigger, Man, get over to 432, man. We be playing at my jigger. He got, he got a show called Thinking Out Loud every Sunday, 6 o'clock Pacific, man, p.m. Tune in to... 432 drop radio dig on that ma jigger he said con we can dig it black neil said yes we can that's what i'm talking about con con and all these great man you know it's just man it, it's just inspiring man it's inspiring to know that the family 
is a step by step, man, in the investigation in real time, man. So, all right, man, let, let, let me get my copyright together. Because we're about to go in, we're about to fall back. All we do around here is fall back, get our, you know, reporting and teaching and scholarship on and research on. All we do is just surf the wave and read books and dig on links, man, don't mind us. We don't even monetize our YouTube platform at all. If you ever see advertisements, it's because they're bullying their way by claiming some copyright strike. And then they'll say, well, if you want us to play your video, you have to let us run your advertisement. All right, man, shit. I guess my hands are tied. The people got to see it, right? So that's the only time you see advertisements when they're being bullies, man. No bullying in 2019. Let go, man. It's a frequency war. We on a war path, man. A how to the real ones. Copyright, fair use, all up in your caboose, bro, man. We just checking out this flick for scholarship purposes, man. And, uh, yeah, man, we just digging on it, man. So let's get a good little chunk out of this. Uh, actually, you know, we're going to get back on this. This Carolina Bay's drop. Love to Jackie Anthony, man. Dropping them drops, man. Dropping them jewels, man. Love to Earl Call. Subscribe to him, man. Holla at him. This joint is called Tecumse, The Last Warrior. It was in 1995. Uh, you know, shout out to Turner Pictures and all that, man. Fair use. Fair use. Fair use. All up in your caboose, bro. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. We're just doing some, you know, scholarship research stuff. So, you know, let us do that. We're going to do that. Surf the wave. And, uh, yeah, man, you obviously dodge your own damn hijack type battle. Told you that. I just want to fall back and just enjoy, since we've been studying, you know, this uh, priest king, man. You know, you got to know that, you know, they've been... <laughs> They've been digging on it and investigating it already. So they're like, man, not too many people know about this. Well, now the people are waking up. Now the now the ancestors of Takum say is waking up. You know what I mean? Hawata, Dragon Canoes. Now they're waking up. And now we're turning around and being like, man, y'all been digging on this the whole time? How come I never heard about this Takum say, the last warrior in 1995? Yeah, man, fair use, let's go, man, fall back, enjoy the show, man, I mean, I'll be right here, uh, surfing the wave with you, man, let go. Shout out to American, Zoe, Zoe, Zoe Trope, Zoe Rope, you, alright, man, you got it. Let go. Seven times in my life, the armies of the long knives had destroyed our homes, burnt our crops, and driven us farther and farther from our homeland. By now, we numbered less than 20 hundred men, women, children, and ancients. The American armies always attacked us at harvest time, forcing us to face winter without food or shelter. Once again, we would be hungry and homeless. there. Almost there, sister. Not much further. 
For 30 years, my son Tecumseh had been fighting to protect the people. Tecumseh, my son, warrior of warriors, the last warrior. Star Watcher, there's this little one. Found her by the side of the road, crying. Take her to her mother, she's hungry. We are praying for you. sister always protect the people keep them safe we will meet Harrison and his long knives tomorrow in the manner that I have yearned and we will defeat them Danaki it was cold like this the night Tecumseh was born we lived on the land of our ancestors. A mother never forgets the birth of any of her children because each child is special. But that night was magical. It was almost like before the long knives came and scattered us like autumn leaves. My daughter, Star Watcher, was the first to see the shooting star that went over our village that night. <laughs> Any question? Remind you the uh, star of Bethlehem? The bright star that follows the birth of the prophet of the Messiah. Now you see clearly the dragon is always present at the birth of the priest kings. Let go. When the panther's eyes shot through the sky, it foretold that my son would be good and full of vision, the strongest of all our leaders. Your brother, the boy, a new son. And such a son. You saw the light from the sky? Yes. Like the eye of a panther when it turns at bay. Oh, what a man he will be born under this sun. How many times will we allow them to burn our villages? Butcher our women and children, destroy our crops! Yeah. Says Black Hawk. The whites prey on the weak and the fearful. If they know we are strong, they will not take our land. We have to be they strong. kill until they learn fear. Only then do they run. Yes. Shall Shawnees live in fear? Oh. 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 striker speaks with the voice of a warrior. Shall the Naga live in fear? But before we make war with the long knives, we must be certain there can be no peace. Yeah. You are our great leader, Cornstock. And your wisdom is known to all. But there has been too much talk. The whites are not to be trusted. I will never mark a treaty with them. Never. Never. We must. Now, remember, we read that Cornstalk later made treaties. And they said they, uh, you know, encouraged him or incited him to sign a deal later when he was leading the tribe. So we got that before. So it's interesting to see this character Cornstalk talking all slick about making a deal. He did. Must take the war to the whites and punish them hard. Who sides with me? I do. Did 
did I do wrong today, Father? No, my son. You did nothing wrong. Boldness is never wrong. You were born under a great sign. You were born to lead. Can you forgive me, Father? You're destined to be a great warrior, Tecumseh. And a warrior must always remember he belongs to the people. Once he learns that, he has nothing to fear. Now! Go on, little brother! Go on! Don't play! Chase him! Can't catch me up too fast! Go on! Catch a little brother and make him squeal! I'm gonna get you! One of us, we must run the guns. <laughs> White face is bad. Strike him as he goes past. Never cried out. Showed courage. Someday you will be a great warrior. Perhaps we should leave and move west. Never. You say the long knives outnumber us, but you urge us to make war. What is our choice? They bleed here, or we bleed all the way into the sunset. What if they win? Do you think of that? for you, Lord Stryker. We will win because we are better and because we are right. I cannot make war without our women's consent. You are their leader, Merotasa. Support me. I'm powerless without you. Peace to my sister. We need you. We need you, my sister. Two days later, a war party left to meet the Long Knives, including my eldest, my fierce Chixika. The white boy adopted and now called Blue Jacket. The young warrior was Segoboa. And my husband. Come home again to me.
A great war chief is honored by being buried close to where he dies. They painted his face black and put him in the ground with bark around him. He lies with his head toward the setting sun. There is no stone or metal in the grave. And at the end, there is a hole in the bark so his spirit can pass through. So, my husband was buried. Kentucky hunting grounds that will stop attacking us. The river will be the boundary. For us, but not for them. They will demand that we stay on our side while they will cross the river, shoot our game, and kill us as we hunt. They offer us another treaty. We have suffered greatly. Good men have died for nothing. I owe it to our people to make peace. Long knives are liars. They will say and do anything to get what they want. And what they want is our destruction. I will not mark another treaty. No! I fear for my people's future. I will say. Hornstock is no longer our leader and will leave our village. Black Hoof will fight the Long Knives. I will kill the white man until father's death no longer hurts my heart. Draw the arrow all the way back to your ear. No loud noise. You must hold it steady. <coughs> loud noise. than I, but your brother will live. I did this. I made him work with the bow when he didn't want to. No, this was not your fault, Tecumseh. You tried to teach him, but he doesn't have your patience. It was no one's fault. These are black days, my son. We must grieve and endure. brother's aid to rout these dogs from Kentucky. We will give you many guns and bring our cannons to smash their forts. The British give us guns? The Redcoats want us to fight the Long Knives. The Americans do not want the English king to be their chief anymore. As proof of our strength to fight, we will show you the power of our cannon. This gun will make a loud noise and its ball will smash that wooden target. Just as it will smash the walls of the Long Knife Forts in Kentucky. Pick and prod. You see the power with your own eyes. This we will use to crush the Long Knife enemy. Thank you. 
little brother. Your time will come. The British didn't keep their promise. They didn't show up at the fort. They never gave us a cannon. The British lie like the long knives. Where did you get the spinning wheel, the silver? Since there weren't enough of us to take the fort, we left and raided farms and cabins. They have farms now? Everywhere. Then there are women there and children. Less now than before. You killed women and children? The white man is spawn of the great serpent. Should we pity a race that's trying to destroy us? We should never have fought them. Now it's too late to make peace. We must give up this land and go west across the Mississippi where there are no whites. I don't believe what you're saying. Father told me women were strong. They could bear anything. You talk like a weakling. Chicken you chicken. dare speak to me like this. You may be a warrior, but you're still my son. Go away! Mother, he didn't mean to. He meant every word he spoke to hurt me. Because he hurt so himself. Which of us hasn't suffered? He's ruled by hate and his heart is stone. The long knives have poisoned all of us. We cannot stay here. I want you to come with me. I can't. I must stay with the people. We are your people too. Who says your destiny is not to go with me and find a new homeland? Father told me my destiny was never to yield. I cannot go. Loud noise. My place is here. Perhaps the master of life has intended that I find a safe place for our grandchildren. But I'll miss you. I'll miss you. Always. This hurt will never heal. I leave my heart with you. When I woke, there were 6,000 people in our homeland. By evening, along with myself, half had moved west to seek a safer place.
whites put their talk in them. <laughs> Maybe Blue Jacket laughs at a foolish man. No, it's true. These black marks, they make the sound of words. Words come from the mouth and go to the ear. No, words can be put in this book and they tell a story. I want you to teach me what these marks mean. Unto one of the least of these my children. Prepare yourself. He's too young, Chicksika. Force him to be a warrior before he's ready. He's the son of Hard Striker. Born under the sign of the Panther's eye, he's ready. to take me? We need you.
You are the son of Turtle Mother and Heart Striker, born under the sign of the Panther. This is Father's War Club. He would want you to have it. You will fulfill your destiny and become our greatest leader. Men against women doesn't seem fair. Well, the women can carry the ball and pass it to each other. The men can only move it by kicking or batting it. It's amazing. Imagine playing a game like this against our women. Work! play again. This won't be the last time for us. Very beautiful. She is favored, favors my brother. She must like him. She gave him his breech cloth. <laughs> Disgrace the great Tecumseh. I'm sorry for you and for those who love you as I love you. Lalewasika. Brother, you're dying. The Revolutionary War had long ago ended. But the British and Americans continued to fight over our land, the territories west of the 13 states. To survive, we were forced once again to ally ourselves with the British. And now word came that the Long Night Chief, George Washington, was sending a great army to destroy us. We've been monitoring their movements, and this is the situation. General Wayne is moving north to attack our fort. The Americans' lust for land is like a man for a woman. They can't get enough. Join us and we can stop them together. Fallen Timbers is a perfect place for you to ambush Wayne. We'll attack from here and smash the Americans between us. And if it goes bad? Fall back to the fort. We'll admit your men and fight together from the walls. <laughs> this has always been my favorite place. Our mother used to take us here when we were children. It's beautiful. Wayne and his long knives will try to take this from us. We leave tomorrow to meet them at Fallen Timbers. That's tomorrow. This is today. There. 
there in the valley. Many. The big one, by the tent, is a general. Mad Anthony Wayne. Thinks he's a god of war himself. Tomorrow he'll be dead. We're running. you see in the glass? I saw a man. A man's face. I've seen it before. Where? In my dreams only, but many, many times. I too have seen something. I've seen my death. Now. Tomorrow at the battle. Well, then leave tonight. Go home. Go anywhere but there. Once a man sees this, it can't be changed. So often I've fought thinking I would die. Now I know it and the fear is less because we fear what we do not know. Promise, when I fall, you will not lose heart. So mark no treaties. The strongest leader, Black Hoof. Even Blue Jacket will break inside. Where Pensawa? No, not Blue Jacket. I've seen it. Make no treaties, man. Come on, man. Revenge is the spit in the wind that comes back in your face. Fight them. Because they're wrong. Remember that when I'm gone. Remember also, mark no treaties. Hi, Jack Free. The strongest leader, Black Hoof. Even Blue Jacket will break inside. Where Pensawa? No, not Blue Jacket. I've seen it. But in my vision, you always refuse. You will be the greatest of all Shawnee leaders because you will not surrender. Now, little brother, let me go easily. Don't mourn what has to be. Live long and lead the people. I have loved you. little chunk man and we'll we'll keep it going man i know you want more i know you want more you know what i mean uh gotta i gotta you know keep it pushing i, I gotta i gotta keep the water flowing but we will be back man i'll, I'll keep this up i'm already tabby i'm already pretty tabby man we're making our dismount man we dug a little bit on the death of the cool say man you know let's just uh Get it like it's the first time, man, because we are putting it all together. You know, various stories. You know, we get it from here. On this day in history, October 5th, 1813, the 45-year-old Shawnee American Indian leader, Tecumseh, born near Xenia, Shinia, Ohio, 
Shinya, Ohio, 1768, was killed at the Battle of Dames in Canada during the War of 1812. He was fighting for his cause and his people alongside British soldiers against the Americans near present-day Cotham, Kent, Ontario. This event pretty much ended the Pan Indian Confederation he organized several years earlier and changed the course of American history in many ways. A multitude of people over the years had bragged to be the one who killed him, but the consensus based on historical recollections and evidence from this battle indicate that he was killed by a manservant under General William Henry Harrison named Richard M. Johnson, but I call him Dick. Hi, man. This claim to fame was used politically year after years after the fact with the campaign slogan Rumsey Dumpsey Rumsey Dumpsey Colonel Johnson killed Tecumseh. Man, that's just disrespectful, man. That's just disrespectful, man. Alright, man. And Dick was elected VP under Martin Van Buren in 1837. Another Tecumseh related event also helped Harrison win the 1841 presidency with the slogan Tippecanoe and Tyler II. Tippecanoe and Tyler II, man. So all they do is mock you and send little hints, little signals that, you know, they're going to be dedicated to, <coughs> dedicated to keeping their foot on the neck of the Negro. You know, like the governor of Alabama was talking about his aboriginal problem. Yeah. Maybe we'll get that one for the dismount, man. If we could still find it. The Alabama senator, governor, whatever case it is, that called all the black people in Alabama aboriginals. Then you'll see clearly that that's just what it is. Oh, you know, you got to take care of your own Indian problem. Your own aboriginal problem. Your own nigga problem. Tippecanoe and Tyler II for his win at the Battle of Tippecanoe, which occurred 30 years earlier in 1811. The legend of Tecumseh was big in those days. It even helped win elections. This is a quote from Harrison in 1811. One of those uncommon geniuses which spring up occasionally to produce revolutions and overturn the established order of things if it were not for the for the vicinity of the United States he would perhaps be the founder of an empire that would rival in glory Mexico or Peru now as we dodge the hijack and remember there's no images there's no images of Tecumesh, right? There's no images. We got that time and time again that there's no images. So they keep giving you an image. Why? What, who's this guy if there's no images? Who's this guy in the movie? You know what I mean? The same image. Why is all of them agreeing to give us this image? No one wants to give us the copper colored knocker found here. Make it too real on them, huh? Make it too real on them, huh? Various stories have cropped up over the years regarding what happened to Tecumseh's body. Everything has been suggested from the body being removed from the battlefield and buried in a secret location in Ohio or Canada by the Shawnee to bring him to him being left on the battlefield or his body mutilated for souvenirs by the winning soldiers, a common practice at that time. And remember, the main his main opposition, this Harrison in 1811 wrote about Tecumseh Tecumesh, one of those uncommon geniuses. So even his enemy had to respect him, man. Uncommon geniuses which spring up occasionally. You know, the sprouting seed springs up occasionally to produce revolutions. 
What is a revolution? It gets the people to wake up, to remember who they are, to fight with nature, the natural course, to fight with the creator in redeeming the seed, the children, the remnant. One of those uncommon geniuses which spring up occasionally to produce revolutions and overturn the established order of things, which is not order but chaos. Thinking you can try down on someone else's tribal land and massacre them and, you know, mutilate and enslave and do all this stuff to a people that have not wronged you just because you want their land. What did he say? If it weren't not for the vicinity of the United States, if it wasn't for where you're at, shit, we could have let you rot. You could have been the founder of an empire that would rival the glory of Mexico or Peru. Oh, man. That's how great, you know, when we talk to Kamesh, man, that, that's, that, that's how great. That's the greatness of this Mashiach. Even his enemy is saying, man, this, this leader here, man, this priest king, this Khan here, this hot Khan here, man, he's he could have had an empire that would rival the glory of Mexico or Peru, a great Israelite king. Man. Yeah, man. You know, you got to feel this shit. You got to feel this shit, man. You got to feel this stuff, man. You know. The Kumse has garnered the respect and admiration of friends, foes, whites, Indians alike over the years. Hey, man, they didn't have to like them. They didn't have to like them. But they damn sure going to respect them. Because he wasn't on that play play. This is priest king status, man. Even the famed General William Tecumseh Sherman was named for the Indian leader. And he in turn passed that name to one of his sons. So even the hijacks started naming their sons after this Negro priest king. U.S. towns, parks, streets have been named for him. The United States Navy even has a bust of an Indian they call Tecumseh. That is considered good luck. Even the, even the Navy today <laughs> has a little Tecumse for good luck, man. That's all a paradox. Why did an enemy of the United States garner so much respect from the very people he fought against? Historian John Sugden summed up Tecumse's qualities well. Courage, fortitude, ambition, generosity, humanity. Eloquence, military skill, leadership, above all, patriotism, and a love of liberty. In short, to his contemporary ab adversaries, he did. He did what they would have done in his place. He fought the fight. He fought the fight, and he did it to the best of his ability, man. So, look, everyone is digging on to Kumsey, man. Everyone's digging on to Kumsey. United U.S. Navy got a bust of an Indian they call the Kumsey. They consider it good luck. They flipping the script, man. They hijacking the energy, man. I mean, we got movies about the Kumsey, man. They, they over there doing, you know what I'm saying, festival things, man. Hold up, man. Hold up, man. They over there doing, um, you know, like little mock, like put on little mock productions to try to remind the townspeople all about, What's <coughs> all about the coops set. And all this is going on while you're, we are completely ignorant to what's going on.
be such camaraderie. All this is going on. <laughs> well, we don't even know what's going on. Back now on Discover Ohio. You know, Ohio has such a rich heritage. One of the most important pieces is the Native American struggle that took place here so many years ago. The award-winning outdoor drama Tecumseh helps keep the story alive night after night in Chillicothe. Before buildings popped up across the state, lived a man who fought to defend his homelands right here in Ohio. And every summer for decades, his story comes to life in Chillicothe. Here was a man who went beyond the human range uh, to help himself, his family, his people. And his culture. Tecumseh was a Shawnee warrior during the late 1700s. The outdoor drama Tecumseh is the story of a man, a warrior. And a we cannot call ourselves warriors if we think of this as courage. More than 30 years ago, there were talks about bringing an outdoor drama to Chillicothe. The idea was to bring to life an historical Ohio figure. It was seven-time Pulitzer Prize nominee and Emmy recipient Alan W. Eckert that suggested Tecumseh. He would go on to write the play that would change the scope of outdoor drama. Tecumseh was different. That script did not employ a narrator. Uh, it totally immersed you. Uh, the, the fourth wall, as they say in theater, was not broken. And it used horses, and it had big battles. It was truly epic theater. Epic because, thanks to the extras added to the play, you really feel like you have taken a trip back in time. It employs real horses. When the script calls for battles, we do real battles. You are able to symphonically, and by that I mean you can see it, uh, you can smell it because of the battles, the gunpowder. So it involves all of the senses. It connects all of the senses. But besides the play, the history, and the heart and soul that goes into telling the story, what may be most compelling about the story of Tecumseh is that it's told on the very grounds that he once walked, adding to the feel of the outdoor drama. A lot of these events happened in what is now their backyard. You know, Tecumseh walked on these grounds. Simon Kenton walked on these grounds. Um, so it, it provides them with a sense of history and maybe a sense of appreciation for their own land that they're on currently. It's all the way from Circleville up through Columbus. Uh, tens of thousands of, of, of bison started out there, came down, crossed the Ohio River, went into Kentucky. These folks, that was their sustenance. That was, that was eradicated. And when you're walking on the, you know, in these places, it might behoove all of us to get a sense of what happened. It might help all of us to better appreciate what we have. They lived, died, you know, here in this area, and, and it's pretty powerful. It gets to you at times, and, you know, and my hope is all that we're feeling and experiencing and any research that we've done, that the audience, you know, really can take that with them, experience that, and feel it with us, because it's good. It's good. But the... I mean, they're doing outdoor dramas. <laughs> All around this Tecumseh, man, you know, all around this priest case, kind of like when we started digging on Preston John, suddenly you realize, man, it's a lot of people digging, you know, certain certain areas. I mean, you know, it's not publicized like that, but you start getting all these sources, these books, these documents, you know what I mean, artifacts, all kinds of things are connected. In the investigation, you realize how serious it is, man, looking at the Portuguese monument, putting up, you know, for these seafarers that died. Looking for President John from like 1162 to 1262 or something crazy. 500 years. 500 years. And we're going we're gonna to start digging on that uh, Fountain of Youth, man. Um, I got a couple good docs, man. Some good little videos. I'm going to get back in that classroom and just uh, see what this Fountain of Youth is all, is all hitting for. But it's getting to a point now where I know they're just trying to you know what I mean? Whatever the, the drop is, is coming out through us. So you got everybody watching, everybody watching. See what we come up with. You know what I mean? See see what trinkets they can get from our investigation. But that's all good because, you know, 
we know we close. We know we close, man. That's why it's important, you know what I mean, to keep the throughout radio flow going so we're not discussing everything on YouTube, knowing already what's behind this machine, all right? That's why we're getting cozy over there in the ether, you know what I mean? And even though the internet's going to be whatever anyway, at least it gives us some type of secluded alcove to get cozy at while we dig on it and enjoy our investigation, man. Because you are the Naga. You are the the Aboriginal. <laughs> and I ain't the one, man. You know what I mean? I ain't the only one calling you the Aboriginal, man. You know what I mean? I ain't the only one calling you Aboriginal, man. You remember the the Alabama? I think it was a senator, man. Aboriginals. <laughs> Blacks. Let's see what we got, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I ain't the only one. I was reading to prepare for this interview. I, I ain't the only one calling you Aboriginal, my naga. Let go. I was quite surprised to see you use the word Aborigines talking about African Americans. You know, I, I've dealt with that issue. Um, uh, I've already you know, talked publicly about that. And my purpose here today is to say that I'm very sorry. And I apologize to anyone whose feelings were hurt by my comment. I've made very, very clear. Why would you have to apologize for slipping up and telling the truth that all these black people are aboriginal to America? Is the gig up? Is the hoax up? Do the powers that be say, nigga, you better go apologize and make this shit right? Don't let the tribes wake up. Let them know they're in captivity on their own land. They ain't from Africa. That they're aboriginals to this continent. The original people, don't let them know. Who's he apologizing to? And I apologize to anyone whose feelings were hurt by my comment. I've made very, very clear. I don't know where that comment comes from. Uh, well, from your subconscious. Well, I, I guess. I mean, it's not even a normal thing anyone would say, even if you meant something in a negative fashion. I don't know if you would pull that out. But for me personally, you can't just uh, close down camp and stop trying to do the things that you think are right, uh, just because somebody, you may, you may give them an unfortunate bit of ammunition, you still got to continue to fight on and, and do what's best for the state in the long run. And but frankly, it's going to give me the opportunity to you know, talk about things that I may never have been able to talk about before. You mean the bill? Well, the bill, or talk about uh, you know, uh, race relations issues, things like that. I mean, I have a freedom that a lot of people don't have because of that. Because you use the word aboriginal. Because I've been through the fire, and I can I can talk to people, I can relate to people, I can let them know what kind of person I am, and we can talk about things that sometimes have been you know a little bit taboo. So because it allowed you to reach audiences you might not otherwise have reached, do you not regret saying it? I think it gives me some opportunities. I went and spoke to a group in uh, the city of Birmingham. It was a, a city councilwoman's uh, community meeting, probably 95 percent African American. And because of, you know, things that I regret, uh, offhand remark I should not have made. Using the word aboriginal. Right. Offhand remark I should not have made. We should <laughs> Where, where'd you get so touchy about the word aboriginal? Where, where'd you get so touchy? When was it such a big deal? This blows my mind, man. This is mind blasting, man. This is mind blasting stuff right here. The more I watch it, man, because he is spooked the fuck out like someone behind the scenes said, God damn, man, you better not ever say this. Fuck it. The word Abba better never come out your mouth again, man. And the dude is just fucking with him. He's like, uh, you talking about because you called all the black people aboriginals? <laughs> My naga, you are the indigenous, all right? Deal with it, man. So when you talk, Teku Mesh. You talking the Naga, Hawatha, the Naga, Dragon Canoe, all this stuff is you, and they know the truth. Uh, community meeting, probably 95% African American, and because of, you know, things that I regret, uh, offhand remark I should not have made. Using the word Aboriginal. 
Right. Offhand remark I should not have made. Which you don't want to say. Yeah. I know better. I know better. Made. Using the word aboriginal. Right. Offhand remark I should not have made. Which you don't want to say. Yeah. I know better. <laughs> I know better than ever say that again. It carries too much weight. Too much heat. Because if I call the so-called proxy aboriginal, no one gets offended. But when I called black people aborigines, we never took offense to that. We were like, oh, you mean that we are original to this land? I mean, why would we get offended, man? We're just talking about the American originally applied to the aboriginals. We know that when you talk aboriginal, you're only talking, man. <laughs> the bit, what do you mean? Oh, Aboriginal. Okay. Aboriginal first, original. So, why are we even talking Ab Original? Take the Ab off because we're just saying first, original. So, you're just saying the original people, first inhabitants of a country. And letting everyone know, in case they didn't know, that they are the copper colored races. Found here, found here, or you know what I'm saying, as my homie man, you know, eloquently, you know what I'm saying, is afraid to put it. That saying it, I think it gives me some opportunities. I went and spoke to a group in uh, the city of Birmingham. It was a uh, city council woman's uh, community meeting, probably 95% African American, and because of, you know, things that I regret. Uh, offhand remark I should not have made. Using the word aboriginal. Right. Offhand remark I should not have made. Which you don't want to say. Yeah. I know better. <laughs> the, um, uh, but what it allowed me to do, they actually listened to what I said. Probably more than they would have anybody else. Because they want to see, you know, this is that guy. This is that person. And we discussed immigration. We discussed... Uh, hey, man. You just dropped the beans, man. You open up a whole entire vortex into the people, the black people that you were apologizing for calling aboriginal, indigenous, right? Oh, man, we're just talking the indigenous people, man. We're just talking the ones, man. The originals. The OGs. First inhabitants on the land. Let go, let go, let go. Let me reload this joint. Okay, there we go. Sometimes it'll be hijacking our, uh, Links, man. This is uh, the races of men. No, no, it's coming up. Yeah, man, it's gonna take a minute. Unless it starts going. Unless it starts going, on, it's gonna take a minute. Alright, man. Alright, man. I'll just take it from here, man. Okay, got some action, got some action. Oh, man. Got some juice I want to get, man. I got some juice I want to get. I'm going to come back to it, man. It's all good. It's all good. Because, you know, Ty Battle not only dropped that races of men dropped on us, but she dropped the history of ancient America. And this is where we're digging on the Kumesh. We're talking about the lawgiver, Moshe. And this is all these comparisons going on between the indigenous, the indigenous Nagas. Let's go. The above singular fact enables us at once to place them in chronological position. It must be after Moses, but before the Savior. Dodge the hijack, we're just talking Joshua. But another fact brings their circle of time still narrower. 
they have no tradition of the destruction of the first temple of Jerusalem. This event occurred 588 years before Christus. Okay. It must therefore be anterior to the national calamity that they trace their origin of this hereafter when in the next volume of next volume the history of the Israelites will be given. But even now, justice to this race compels us to offer a few words in their defense as a people for being already sufficiently shown that they are of the great Hebrew family. So I was going to get something else, but this pretty much sums it all up right now. Because we're talking about the original history of ancient America, that they are the great that they are the great Hebrew family. They may fall in the estimation of some readers upon religious principles. It has been shown that they have no tradition of crucifixion or the desolation, desolation of the temple. Is there no sentiment in the mind of the Christian reader as the first fact is unfolded other than that they, that of historical data? All right, man. The aboriginals of the north are Israelites of the house of Jeroboam, not Jews of the house of Judah, a distinction of all importance as the pages of the subsequent volume will prove. So he's going to try to, you know, get all specific on this Jeroboam situation that all the, all the Nagas in North America must be from the house of Jeroboam. That's when it started getting silly, but he's, Breaking it down, you know, real clear, real concise, man. Who we talking about when we discuss the great Hebrew family, like the senator called the aboriginals are the great Hebrew family. And that's why he had to apologize. That's why he had to get right, man, and keep it right, man. We only getting back in this great, you know, uh, tip of canoe, dragon canoe. We're going to get back on this prophet. We're going to get back on this. Uh, eclipse that's popping off in 1806. We're going to come back and, you know, discuss more about this Star with a Tail situation. And for sure, for sure, we'll get back into Kumsei, the last warrior, man. Until then, man, keep digging on it, man. You know what I mean? Keep surfing the wave. Just know that you're valuable. You know what I mean? Every bit of your inspiration is valuable. You know, goes, um, you know, just speaks, speaks, you know, true to the heart. That we got our family out here for real that's pushing past the fabric of the matrix, man. And we got to wake up and we got to wake up, you know, at, at the pace that, that we're doing it, man. You know, it's happening at just the right pace. So don't try to rush nothing and don't try to, you know, ignore nothing. Just allow yourself to be the water for real, man. And keep on flowing above the hijack, above the static. Above anything reckless, above the chaos, you will find a path that Hawaii is destined just for you, man. So you can take a walk on the open road. A hive to the real ones. A hive to the home team. Man, we're going to get back on that black prophecy. Shabbat Shalom.